Photography is lots of fun. We can all agree on that. Some aspects of it, though, might seem a little intimidating. One thing some people might be intimidated by is doing an HDR panorama. This is a combination of two skills that in themselves can be intimidating, so combining them together might not sound like the easiest thing. But I'm going to show you today that it really is simpler than you think, and a really great skill to have if you love landscape photography. Now, I actually did plan on doing this out in the field. I went out earlier this week to do an HDR panorama, but unfortunately, because I live in Wales, I got absolutely decimated by a rainstorm. Oh dear. Those pictures probably, I'm hoping they're gonna look really good though. Anyway. I was actually filming another video and I was just gonna do this part of the video there, but if you wanna see me get absolutely soaked through, make sure you subscribe because uh, that was torrential, that rain, and that footage is going to go up in a couple of weeks. But anyway, the first step that's really important with doing an HDR panorama is making sure that your camera is set up properly. So you've got your composition and everything, you know what you want to take a picture of, but making sure that your camera gets good images is the most important thing. Otherwise, if you haven't got good files, you won't be able to do a good HDR panorama back in Lightroom. So first of all, it's important to make sure that your camera is level on its tripod. If it isn't level, your horizon will be off and it will really struggle to stitch the pictures together. Whereas if it's level, as you're turning your camera around, when Lightroom stitches the pictures together, they will look a lot better and you'll have to do less cropping at the top and bottom to get rid of any blank spaces where it stitched them together in a sort of diagonal shape. Now, some cameras have got an inbuilt feature where they've got level sensors, so it'll be able to tell you on the screen if it's level. Mine personally doesn't, and that's okay because you can just use a good old fashioned spirit level. A uh, little thing with a bubble in it that you can put either in the hot shoe or on your tripod. Make sure that your camera is completely level, which so when you turn it, you know you're going to get good images. Once you know that your camera is level, the next thing to do is make sure that your settings are manual. Now, if you've watched my channel for a while, you know that 75% of the time I use aperture priority mode because I trust the camera to get it right. But when it comes to panorama, because you're putting lots of pictures together, you want them all to be the exact same exposure when you stitch them together. So in order to ensure that, you want to make sure that your settings are in manual mode. Now, if you want to be able to judge it, just use your light bar if you're not sure of what settings you should use. My personal recommendation would be to stop down to between F8 and F11, keep your ISO at 100, and then just adjust your shutter speed so that it's right for the exposure and you get a good exposure because you're photographing a horizon, a good narrow aperture means that you can get a lot in focus. Now comes the HDR part. Now, an HDR image is three exposures generally uh, that you link together, one that's overexposed, one that's underexposed, and one that's correctly exposed. Too bright, too dark, and correct. I've done a whole video on that before, so I won't go into detail on that. Uh, but this means that you have to do that for each frame that you take. Now, with most cameras, it's fairly easy to do on mine. You just go down to the light bar and scroll. It's that simple. It's known as exposure bracketing. So if you don't know how to do it on your camera, most cameras have the feature inbuilt these days. So just Google your make and model and how to exposure bracket, and you'll easily find it. For example, just type in how to exposure bracket on Canon 250D, like I use. And then once you've got your camera all ready to go, turn on your two second timer so that you can press the button and leave it so the camera takes the picture without your finger making it shake at all so you get a good, crisp, clean frame each time. So now that you've got your camera set up and ready to take the pictures, now you actually want to take the frames that you want to turn into a panorama. Now this bit's very simple, probably the easiest part of the process. All you want to make sure you do is make sure that you overlap each frame that you take so that the software knows where to stitch it together. My recommendation again would be to, to overlap between uh, a third and a half of each frame so that there's plenty of information for the software to see, ah yes, yeah, so that one fits with that one sort of thing and they can overlap and then uh, if you do that, you're giving the software the best chance of being able to properly stitch those pictures together. Now by doing this, what that means is you actually get three images per frame that you want to take. So three images, three images, three images. So if you're doing a panorama, you will have at least six images for an HDR panorama. In the one that I'm using today, I've actually got nine images because it was three frames and three pictures per frame. 
Now I did actually get a panorama picture, but uh, it was an HDR one, so I can't use it in today's video. Instead, I'll be using the picture from last week that I got, that was an HDR panorama as an example. It's one of my favorite images that I've caught this year, so I think it's a good one to use to show how to stitch it together and how to edit it as well. So now that you've done your HDR panorama, it's time to stitch those images together. And that takes us on to step two. So now that you've got your images, you should end up with something like this. Here I've got nine pictures that I wanna to combine together to create my HDR panorama. Now I'm using Lightroom as the software for this, but the principles I use, uh, I'll talk about it in a way that means you can use it with pretty much any software that you use that can do HDR panoramas. I won't talk about Lightroom specific things, well, I'll try not to anyway. Uh, so this is probably gonna be the shortest part of the tutorial because it's really simple what you need to do here. Here you can see we've got our nine pictures or nine images uh, and you'll notice that every three pictures look the same that's because those are my three frames just of different exposures you want to combine them and then stitch them together now you could do that separately but thankfully lightroom has got an option for doing it all at once so what you want to do is you've got your nine images here uh, going to select them all first of all so hold shift and click on the end one so they're all selected uh, right click on your mouse and here you see we've got photo merge You've got your three usual options, HDR merge, panorama merge, and the one we want, HDR panorama merge. Sounds complicated, it's not. Just let Lightroom do the work. Click on that, you'll see this come, come up. It usually generates a preview. I'm not too worried about looking at the preview. I'll just click on merge straight away because I'm pretty confident it'll be good. And it'll just take a few seconds, depending on the specs of your computer, to merge them together uh, and turn it into an HDR panorama image for you. And there you have it, all ready to go. Now I noticed straight away that this, it wasn't level, my tripod, when I took this picture. This is what happens when your tripod isn't level. It's a good demonstration. I didn't intend for that to happen. <laughs> uh, I must have just got something wrong uh, when I was leveling off the tripod. I did use the spirit level, but uh, obviously I wasn't paying enough attention. But that's fine. We haven't lost too much space on the edges. Uh, I'm happy with that. You can just solve it with a simple crop. If you click on constrain crop on the bottom in your geometry, uh, I normally use auto anyway, just to make sure everything's level. It is if Lightroom thinks it's level, so there's obviously something wrong up there. <laughs> so there you have it. You have an HDR panorama picture to work with. So that means we go on to step three now, and that's editing the picture. Now, this is the place that you could go really wrong with an HDR panorama image, uh, and I'll explain why now. So as always, taking a simple gentle approach to editing is really important and this is especially important with hdr images because you've got so much dynamic range it's very easy to make your picture look super unnatural you can bring the shadows all the way up the highlights all the way down and make it look super unrealistic i've talked about that in a video before in the one that was specifically about just hdr images so in this case it's going to be a gentle approach so first of all, we're going to start with a crop. I, there's nothing added on the end here, so I'm just going to crop that edge off. Let's go with custom. Just to about there. I want to include this mountain and give it a bit of space. And then on this side, the same again. I think we'll crop into about there. So we keep this little mountain in here. And we've kept our composition, you see, because I want to balance this heavy element of the mountain of the sun with this heavy element of the river down here, the estuary going out. Those are my two uh, balance points on the thirds. Uh, so it's heavier on this side here and it balances out with there. So as usual, I'm probably going to put a preset on this just to get us started off. Go with my, uh, let's see with an essentials preset now as you can see because this is an hdr image applying presets can make them look really ugly to begin with so i like to start with a preset and work back when it comes to hdr images so this you can see looks really yellow and ugly so let's bring up the shadows a little bit just a little bit more i'm going to raise the whole exposure as you can see in the histogram up here it's a little bit underexposed still so Let's bring up 0.3, bit more, 0.5. There we are. It's a bit more balanced now, that exposure. I'm happy with the contrast, the whites and the blacks. I'm all, I'm all okay with that. And our 
point curve as well. The sunset when I was there seemed a lot more sort of orange. This is very yellow at the moment. So I'm gonna adjust the colors a little bit to make sure that we get some of that orange in. So let's go with minus 25 on that. Ever so slightly orange on that now. Bring down the saturation ever so slightly as well because it's just a little bit too much. It seems a bit unrealistic. And the same with the oranges, do the same. Do we want that? Yeah, that's better. And then bring that saturation down a little bit as well. Already it looks a lot better, that image. We've got the original and then the edited. It looks loads better. I'm happy with the, the effects that I apply in this preset. Maybe a little bit more dehaze just to bring out a bit more detail where, like down here in the valley where the sun was beaming through. Okay, so those are our basic edits all done. I'm happy with them. Now it comes to a little bit of masking. Now, I want to heal this spot up here. You see this bright spot in the sky. I find that distracting. My eye gets drawn up to that constantly. So we'll just get rid of that. I would normally be a bit more fussy about this, but for the sake of speed of the video, we'll just do a really quick blot that out. There we are. I would normally be a lot more fussy in that. You could probably see it really obvious there, but for the sake of this video, that'll do for now. And then we want to come on to masking. So the, this doesn't actually need a lot of masking. I'm happy with uh, the sky mostly. Uh, I just want to bring out a bit more detail in the sky and make the, that sunbeam really pop. So that's what we'll start with. We'll go with sky selection first. Let the computer work out where the sky is. Okay, so it thinks that the, the sea down here is part of the sky. Now a quick way of getting, solving that is just by subtracting a linear gradient from it. So we hold down shift and drag a linear gradient up to the horizon where the sea is and drag that up. Leave a little bit of overlap. As you can see there now, it's just selected the sky. There's no, the sea's barely selected at all. A little bit more up maybe. That's better, there we are. So now we've just got the sky selected. We'll bring that exposure down ever so slightly just to bring a bit more detail to it a little bit of dehaze too, there's our 10 dehaze. There we are. Not so much that it looks unnatural. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to, it's really bugging me that heel spot. I'm gonna have to get rid of it. <clears throat> it's just so obviously been healed. <laughs> Go for a bigger spot there. Yeah, that's a bit better. So now that we're sort of happy with our sky, I'm gonna mask the sunbeam now. If you hold down shift as you draw a circle gradient, a radial gradient, it'll keep it a perfect circle. Make it nice and wide so it fills the frame from where it is. And uh, we, we feather it all the way down so it's just at the bright spot where the sun is. So you can see the sun there. Now if we had, if we reduce the dehaze slider, I'm gonna go extreme and go 50. Nope, minus 50, sorry. That's a little bit too much. Let's go for minus 40. There we go. As you can see, that sort of makes it as if the sun is shining out from there. Bring up the whites a little bit. And the blacks. And maybe just a little bit more exposure. You can see now that it really makes that bright spot pop. Reduce the contrast a bit as well. There we go. Now, as you can see, that's really desaturated it. So what we can do now is we can add a little bit of our own color to make it look really uh, orange and intense. So if you click on colorize with that and then just bring it up to the oranges ever so slightly. Now, don't overdo this because it will look really obvious if you go like all the way up here that looks really like sort of intense and ugly. Whereas if we just stick at the bottom of the colors, we get a nice bit of sun flare. It looks realistic, adds a bit of color to the clouds in that area too. And it really makes that sunshine pop out. To be honest, I'd be pretty happy with that edit. It looks still natural. The shadows are still dark, which we really want as well. Uh, the sky's really intense and bright. It's balanced nicely with the estuary. Now we can use a bit of artistic license if we want. 
I think I'd like to add a little bit of color theory to this. It's already here a little bit. You can see that you've got the oranges here and the teal of the sky. I want to make the teal of that sky a little bit more intense. And so if we go with masking again, I'm going to do it using a radial gradient just because it's quick and easy. You know I love radial gradients. It's one of my favorite editing tools. Let's just bring it up to the sky up here. Once again, using the colorize tool, that's all we really need to do in this area. You see, just change the color of those clouds ever so slightly. So we want to go with a bit of a ever so slightly teeth. If you overdo this, it'll look really ugly. It's like if you went up here again, it, it just doesn't look natural. Whereas you just add an ever so slight amount. And there you've got it. We've got a lovely balanced scene an HDR panorama with lots of details in the shadow and the highlights. I'm really pleased with that edit. It's very similar to the original edit I did. This is how the picture looked originally. You've got the bright sky, really intense, really dark shadows. And just by doing a few small edits, we've got a really nice scene. Uh, this would look great on the wall. And in fact, let's see how many megapixels this is. Just bear with me while I do the maths on it. If you combine these two numbers here at the top of the screen, that gives you the megapixel count. So this is a nearly 36 megapixel picture. That means it will look great on a wall because you'll be able to print it really big being nearly 36 megapixels. And that's because it's several me megapixel pictures combined together to make it a bigger megapixel picture. It's that simple really. And there you have it. From start to finish, we've done our HDR panorama picture. It really isn't that complicated. It's a simple process that you can really get a lot of use out of and is great for vistas like this. If you've enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please do give it a like so that other people can find this tutorial and they can learn it as well. If this gets likes, YouTube will recommend it to other people who are looking to do HDR panoramas. And if you're not already subscribed and you like this sort of tutorial style thing, then please do subscribe because I very often put up tutorials like this about how to do things that can seem complicated, but they really aren't once you just get down and do it. If you haven't watched it, you want to see the video where I got this picture, which I was really pleased with that video, how it turned out, then watch this video here and I'll see you next time.